So we have the transfer shaft all back in place. Done the screws up tight. I've checked that the focus ring moves smoothly. Sometimes you may find that the scale ring rubs on here, in which case slacken the screw slightly, push that to the outside of its travel in order to clear that, and then you should be good to go. So that all moves smoothly. Now I'm not going to put the door on the front of this yet, and the reason I'm not going to do that is that that tiny washer that caused me so much grief when it fell out when I was taking the camera apart needs to be carefully put into place. There it is there. And that goes on this shaft. And I want to be able to see what I'm doing with that when I assemble it and put the shutter release on top of it. So that part's done. We can turn our attention to the film advance. And typically, I start with the film advance shaft. I'm just checking to make sure that that's good. On a camera that's seen an awful lot of use, particularly in dusty conditions, the nickel plating here on the shaft will actually have been rubbed through to the brass. But uh, that's showing none of those problems. So the camera has done fairly little work, I would say. Now I typically choose to use a graphite grease on this part. And I like this stuff. It's uh, got a tackiness to it. It stays on the surface as it's put on. So I pull back the spring. Rub some onto the shaft above that collar. And I'll rub some onto the shaft there. I'm pulling back the collar and rubbing some onto the shaft below it. And I'll work that with my fingers. Making sure it feels nice and smooth. And it does. I'm going to put a bit of grease into the spring. And that's so that as it revolves and the spring winds up and it binds on itself, that it's a smooth action. That is no great friction there. That's good. So that section's good. We need our sprocket, our take-up spool rather, and the bush that goes into it. So the bush goes into the plain end of the spool. The spool drops into the camera, the bush goes to the bottom of the camera, and our shaft drops into place. Now, I normally drop them into the same place each time. There's a cut here, a groove, where the spring actually sit, sits, and normally I point that to the end of the body. On the Retina 2A it doesn't much matter where you position this because the adjustments tend to be done elsewhere. On other cameras it's important to get it all into one place so that your, the tension of the rewind action of the return spring for the advanced shaft is correctly positioned. That's so that when you swing the film advance lever out it moves smoothly and positively back into position once you've reached the end of, your, end of the uh, stroke and doesn't just hang. If you have the tension on that wound up too high that can cause you problems. It can make the action of the advance stiff because the spring is being coiled up too hard and sometimes binds. So you don't want to overdo it. And of course overdoing the spring tension there too could lead to failure of the spring completely. And you don't want to be doing that. The only time I've ever seen any serious problem with the return spring on those film advance shafts is where somebody had attempted a repair and 
twisted it too far in one direction, typically the wrong direction. They do not like being unscrewed. Springs do not like being twisted back against the direction they normally twist moving. So I'm just checking the action of that and that rolls around nice and smoothly. We can drop our film sprocket shaft into place. I'm just giving that a blow to make sure I've got there's no moisture involved in that at all. Um, this has come from the cleaner. And they have been dried, but hollow shaft, sometimes there's moisture left inside them. So I applied a little bit of grease to that shaft and a little bit to the gear at the top. And you don't need much there at all. That would probably quite happily run dry. Here's our sprocket. The sprocket's got a slot. The slot goes to the top. If I drop my shaft in, through, and into position. Now there's a single screw. And I've got to turn my shaft so that I can see where the screw hole goes. And there it is, there, right there. I find the right screw. As I said, there were three screws that looked much the same. And it was the longer of the three was the one we wanted for this job. The shorter of the, the short two screws, they are the hinge pin screws for the front door. Alright, so that's in place. At the base of the camera, let's just open that front up so that we, the camera stands up in place. That's better. Alright, at the base. We need the lock lever for the rewind button, which is there, and it's spring and it's screw. The screw is a step screw, it's got a step on it for the spring, a step, smaller step below it, it runs through the centre of this. Don't confuse it with another screw, vaguely similar in can description, which does the spring at the top of the camera. It's, it's the larger of the two you want for this job. And our spring is here. Normally I put a bit of molybdenum paste on this lever on the tip. That rounded tip, that rounded tip that runs against the, these arms on the end of the film advance. So I just put a bit of molybdenum on there and usually I just put a wipe in the screw hole in the, in the centre while I'm at it. That sits in the body like that. Put the spring in place and then hook it into position after you've got the screw and everything in place. So that just sits on there like that. Take our screw. I'm using a smaller screwdriver than you normally would for a screw this big to get this started because the, the slot is quite narrow. Just run that down. Make sure that the, uh, that the lever floats freely. It's not being caught. That the screw does actually fit down into place. Now I'm going to nip that screw up tight with a bigger screwdriver. And then I have to hook the spring in place. The spring has to come from this side over to this side of that tab there. So, using a couple of pairs of tweezers, 
here we go. That's it. Now we can put the rewind button in place. So I'm holding my finger against the shaft at the top to apply a little bit of light pressure. Pull that lever back, which allows this to be depressed. Now it's sitting ready. So our rewind button. is there. It has that heavy duty washer and that spring. Normally put a little bit of grease on this and it doesn't need much. Put the spring in place Put the washer on over the top. And then screw it onto the end of that shaft. Now I'm holding that shaft in position with my finger at the top of the camera to stop the shaft wanting to disappear up inside and annoy me. And I just need to get that screw started really. It doesn't want to. I don't know why. That's better. So I'll just run that up with my fingers. Open the back of the camera. Check that the button can be pressed down. Now if it can't be pressed down it means that the tab here, the lever is underneath it. That's better. Clips down nicely. And as the film advance shaft rotates, it'll be rotating this direction. It just pushes this out, which lifts the other end of the lever, which allows the mechanism to drop into place. And what it does is it couples this gear at this end, couples or uncouples it from the film advance mechanism. So I'm choosing my special pliers to make sure that that's up snug, and it is. And we're closing up on the last of that stuff. So our tripod socket, the surround here needs to go on. There it is. And finding the screws. Now there are two brass screws that held that surround for the rewind button on place and they really need to be cleaned up. I think I actually put those through the cleaner didn't I? I did. So that's good. That's one. Oh where did the other one go? There's the other one. They look a lot better without the green scunge on the top of them. I'll just nip those two up tight. And our tripod socket. There's three screws. Now there's a number of screws much the same here. There's about eight I think from memory. They're the same size, but three of them will probably have traces of adhesive or leather on them still. And they're the ones that came from the base. If we're very lucky, they're all clean and shiny, we can put them anywhere. And it looks a bit suspect. That one's definitely from the base of the camera. 
so is that one. And that one there I said was suspect, didn't I? Yes, close enough. And any screws that have got adhesive and traces of leather still stuck to them, they should be at the bottom of the camera where they will get more adhesive and more leather stuck to them. I think I ran up to a file size limit there. That's okay, I was just saying that we can get these screws back in. Make sure they're nice and tight. That's our tripod socket done. And to stop that leather flapping around while I'm busy working on the camera, I'm going to pop this surround back in place temporarily and put a single screw in it to hold it in position. That just stops that leather flapping backwards and forwards while I'm working on the camera. And the screw left in my tray will help remind me that actually I do need to deal with that sooner or later. I shouldn't be able to forget anyway because I've got to be able to fit the front door. So our focus is nice and smooth. We've dealt with our film advance and our rewind at the bottom of the camera. And now we have to assemble the film advance me mechanism at the top of the camera. So, start with this. Start with the clutch assembly, three pieces, the outer, the spring and the inner. Typically I use my graphite grease for doing this job and basically I just wipe that around the inside surfaces here. That's where that spring's going to bear. I need another tool. Back in a second. That's what I was looking for. Alright. Assemble this. Take our centre. Our spring goes on there. It's got a tab on it. And the tab must drop into the notch. Taking these circlet pliers. No, they're not circlet pliers. They are electrical crimp lug pliers. Cheapies. I'll use that to hold that in position. because that spring wants to push outwards and won't fit into its outer. No, something's not happening today. That's better. I'll just rotate this into position, effectively pulling that spring in. I'm only keeping very light pressure on these handles. I don't want to distort that spring at all. I just want to be able to push it into position. So it's all closed up. And I can slide this cover over the top. Make sure it's nice and square. It just drops into position. Now that clutch should move in both directions. In one direction it'll be much tighter than the other. The direction that it's loose in, if it was on the camera, you should be able to turn the top in an anti-clockwise direction that should be easier than turning it the other way. It's that light pressure that's that's the that's where it's doing its work in the camera. The other the other it never needs to move the other way. All right. A little bit of grease. Here I'm using that synthetic grease. That drops into place. And that gear drops down 
into the take-up spool, into the slots in the take-up spool, and you can see here that it's dropped down level of the, below the level of the top plate. Now we have this guide bush that fixes the position of the shaft itself at the top, stops that floating around, but it also carries these idler gears here, and the idler gears couple this gear to this gear, amongst other tasks. So, I need to get some grease into those. And what I tend to do is get a decent sized blob of grease and then squash it with my thumb, which forces it into the gap under hydraulic pressure. Just forces it into that gap just to make sure there's some grease between the surface, the inner surface of these wheels. And that's all we need to do. Usually give a little wipe of grease to the inside of that shaft. It doesn't need much. And that can drop into position. Now this has to mesh with the sprocket, the wheel on the sprocket shaft and the wheel on the take-up spool at the same time. So you can roll those into place. That should just pull down, make sure you feel, you'll feel it click into place. And then we can put the three screws in. They were countersunk head screws, the same as we've used in the base of the camera, except these will be clean shiny ones with no grease, no uh, glue or leather. Just checking that that's fine. Before I tighten the screws up, check that that rolls smoothly, both shafts. If you don't check, you may find that it's actually one of these gears is trapped. It's Instead of the teeth being engaged correctly, one is sitting on top of the other gear. It's uh, not... In, when you've pulled the top, when you've pulled this guide down into place, the gear is, instead of engaging with the gear below it, is just sitting on top of it, and the teeth could be damaged. You've got to be, got to avoid that. That screw doesn't want to bury properly. There's something wrong there. Let's just check and make sure that the other screws are not too tight. Sometimes things are a little bit out of whack. Those screws heads should all come down pretty much flush with that surface. That's better. That's good. Right, and roll the sprocket wheel. You can see that gear revolving. And if I revolve the spool, you can see that gear is revolving. This gear. This gear couples those two components together. So I'm just putting a smear of grease across the base. And I'll put a smear of grease on the teeth, only in one spot, because it doesn't really need much. And drop that into place. Now, the sprocket, if I roll the sprocket with my thumb, you'll see that I'm revolving the gear at the same time. And that in turn revolves that shaft, revolving the spool. So they all revolve together, and I'm checking that for smoothness of action. Sometimes you get a distorted tooth on one of the gears, or a little bit of dirt embedded into the root of the tooth, and you end up with a, a bump. It should be smooth. That action feels good. We have a ratchet that needs to go on here, which stops this thing from being able to roll backwards. And our ratchet componentry consists of the ratchet. There should be a space that it sits on there. And then there's its spring and post there. 
So the spacer sits here. The ratchet pull sits there. And now we need to get our spring and post down into position. That dropped in nicely. Make sure that pull's free to move. Do up that screw and hook the spring into place. So I'm just going to hook that round to the other side of that pull. There it is. So now, when I advance anything here, you'll see that that ratchet, you may even hear it. That ratchet's dropped into place, and it means that this component can only roll in one direction. When we go to rewind the film, we depress the button at the bottom of the camera. Which brings its gear out of mesh with the idler on that guide so that the sprocket can then revolve around smoothly. There's nothing stopping it from revolving. The spool is only held at this in this position. It can be rolled back against the tension of the clutch inside. That clutch allowed for slippage, it allows you to pull the film back. There's always resistance there. There's meant to be. But that clutch, that's what it does. It allows you to roll the spool backwards. When you advance your film, you're effectively turning this shaft, which swings out the lock lever from the rewind and allows the rewind allows the sprocket shaft gear to drop down back in engagement with that idler on the guide. And so it's all ready to advance film again.